Hello everyone, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3, 5th edition edition. Last time, I can't really remember what we did before we came out to see Edwin. Perhaps it was the little cave with the druid in. Time to rest. But I've been playing a lot of Gloomhaven, so time to pick Baldur's Gate back up. And let's just follow the path that we're on for right now. We recently got to level 3. So we still have plenty of spell slots and the like. There's just an open coffin there, which is always great fun. A pair of leather boots on the road. With haste. Now, normally I wouldn't dig through these locations quite so much, but if there's any possibility that stuff will have been added or changed in the last patch. And so I want to try and make sure that I'm looking at all the available locations. Another oh, smells like rotten eggs. I wonder if in a future patch or the full game there might be another companion here. Scrapwood shield we have no need for. And I don't think we could make this leap if we wanted to, even if we were very strong. Perhaps with like a fly speed or something. Do I even recognize any of this? Not really. Could consider casting Find Familiar with Gale and getting something to fly over there and have a look, but it doesn't seem to be geometry that wants to be explored. I can't get across here either. So, it looks like we're either going to be crossing on the riverbank or up on the bridge. And since we're down here on the riverbank already, let's do that. Past the open coffin, which I wonder where it came from. That's a whole other barrel of concerns. So, here we're going to get our first example of a Starion refusing to automatically walk through the river or any flowing water because of his newly acquired ancestry. If we have him run across here, you'll see he starts taking what I think is going to be acid damage. Yeah. Takes acid damage per turn because of something that we haven't learned about this campaign yet, but we will in time. Is this the Owlbear Cave? Keep going. Must be surely. Look at the feathers on the ground. It's a nest that must be nearby. Well, since we're here and we have a party of four, I don't imagine this to be too much of a bother. Can't slow down. Shouldn't and there's some light treasure to be found as well, but we'll do that afterwards. Let's get don't everyone sneaking. Don't touch me. Ready and willing. Yes, you are willing, aren't you? An eviscerated goblin. Stench. Dead owlbear prey, no doubt. Light on my feet. We've got another body of water to cross, so more potential damage for a Starion. And then as we get back here, we can see the owlbear. Slightly injured and distressed. And there is the owlbear cub. Uh, a starion came over with us this time. That's fine by me. Now, I don't know that we're going to be able to sneak up here awfully easily. I was trying to concentrate. Stand careful. But if anyone's going to have a chance to do it, it's going to be the rogue. So we'll get them up high into a position that's slightly more advantageous. The element of surprise. Then there are these fissured stalactites above, but I don't think the owlbear's path goes underneath them directly at any point, so I'm not sure how we would get them there. But what we are going to be able to do is sneak attack from up here and then get everyone else involved in the fight. 
Should be a pretty swift one, really. We still have twinned metamagic with one sorcery point remaining if we want to attack two things. And we have plenty of spells otherwise with Gale and Shadowheart. So, from our position where we are, I think we'll just start with a sneak attack from up here. Cannot have disadvantage. Uh, is that because of the darkness obscuring, perhaps? Let's get over to a better angle. Oh, damn it. Alright, well, I biffed that. I thought jumping might have ruined my sneak attack. Uh, can we bonus action hide? We can. But we still can't have disadvantage on our attack because they are obscured by shadows, unfortunately. Even though I think Astarian should have sneak attack. But before we attack with him, let's get everybody else going in the order. And I think a second level chromatic orb will be just fine. Interestingly, these are all paired off now. I complained previously that they weren't, but much nicer to see them this way. So that's going to be 4d8 thunder damage. And where's the kiddo gone? Is it right behind it? It is. So we might as well twin this. And we have to select our spell again. No, we can't twin something at second level because it's one sorcery point per level. So, scrap that. Hope your soul is in good hands. 18 damage, pretty solid. And get the others involved as well. My favorite. If we go with the guiding bolt here. If we manage to hit successfully, Astarian will then be able to have advantage on his attack. Time to feel Good, so then we'll select Astarian. We can now... No, we still cannot, even though they're... we have double advantage, single disadvantage, and plus two for high ground, but we still can't get a sneak attack going, which is a damn shame. So is there anything I'd rather try and attack with, with Gale? First level Witch Bolt seems suitable. With advantage on the attack roll. We still missed. Four on 1d20 plus two plus three plus nine. Did we not have advantage? Because I thought we should have. Never mind. Right. Now it is time to attack with Astarian. And let's... Get this thing moving slightly more slowly. They are now hamstrung. Dashing with what speed they do have. Hamstrung, movement speed reduced by 50. And Albert's Rage. Albert's is ranged, increased strength by 3, armor class reduced by 1. Sounds good to me. 35 HP left. We do still have a spell slot, but I think we'll save it for an emergency and just go with our cantrips for now. I really don't think this target is as is obscured by shadows. But hey, we still hit for nine, which is great. What fools these mortals be. We missed with Witch Bolt, so we can't reactivate it. Of course the sorcerer puts out more damage.
Good stuff. All right, 17 HP remaining. We have one second level spell slot left. We probably could inflict wounds this thing to death. And we missed. That is a great, great shame. It's gonna hurt. Baby causing us no problems though. There's a critical miss. We can't move away without procking an attack of opportunity. And if we try and attack with ranged, we would have disadvantage for being threatened. Although we already have disadvantage because target obscured by shadows. So that's not going great. We can just do our standard attack from up here. Or how about our own chromatic orb? We miss that as well. Shadowheart is very injured, but we are not in a threatened area at the moment. Alright, we're going to want to get Shadowheart up. She just rolled her second death failure, so helping her is a priority before she dies. Oh, damn. I did not see that coming, to be honest. I've missed this. Let me guess, you're going to be out of range now. Not quite. Oh, come on. We can't get across any of these gaps because... Oh, we do have a bonus action to jump, but if we dash, we wouldn't have a bonus action anymore. The witching hour. You've already had a reaction, so we can afford to not have a reaction from the owlbear cub. So, we're going to try and step over to here. It shall be done. Gale gets crit, of course he does. Help up Shadowheart, give her one hit point. Then Shadowheart does not have a turn to take right now, it seems. In my favor. We could take a healing potion, just to make sure Gale doesn't go down next as well. The one potion of healing he has on him. And what a good potion of healing it was. There's Shadowheart with a bonus action. A good potion of healing for her. But I'm not gonna. What I am gonna do is step back slightly. Oh, they just have it out for Shadowheart, apparently. Thank goodness the baby missed. Now, what do we do? This thing has 12 HP left. I think I'm just going to do the near guaranteed thing. Torment. You're kidding me. We rolled a 1, 2, 2, 2 on 4d4. And it has 1 HP left. Please, Astarian, be able to do one piece of damage to that owlbear over there. Even if we have to dash... to get over here. I'm begging you. Thank goodness. The cub looks from you to his dead mother. A single strike will end his suffering. No. We, we killed the threat. It's no threat to us now. You 
watch speechless as the cub begins to eat his mother. Nature can provide for the cub. Perhaps it'll live. Right, the cub is healing. We need to sort our friends out. That's a starion that we've got selected. Let's help over here as well. And I think an immediate short rest is probably in order. Probably wouldn't do us any harm right now. Let's arcane recovery with Gale. And I'll take two first level spell slots, please, and thank you. Did that get a new animation, or have I just not played a wizard in that long? Hello again. Astarian, is there anything up here to investigate? Does not seem to be. Over there. So we'll hop back over. Join the rest of the party. That was not what I intended to do, but sure, it's done now. What am I to do? Get the rest of the party back here for some looting. Astarian, join everyone else. We'll take that short rest. Now we're not at too much of risk immediately of dying. Bones, don't need. Headless Skeleton has the Oak Father's Embrace, medium armor, 13 plus 2, embroidered with a simple maxim, nature is the true state of the world. This armor radiates a faint divine power. The wearer of this item gains order of nature. Undead creatures that hit the wearer receive 1d6 radiant damage. Beasts that hit the wearer receive an additional 1d6 radiant damage. Well, I think Shadowheart's the only one with medium armor proficiency here. And what's she wearing currently? 14 plus 2, disadvantage on stealth rolls. Or 13 plus 2, no disadvantage. Well, if we come into contact with any undead, we'll try and keep in mind that we have that on our persons. Let's also take this owlbear egg. That's going to be worth some cash. An owlbear egg. These are supposed to be worth a fortune. And then... No one back home will ever believe this. Up Never top, there is a backpack somewhere. There it is. We'll take that for our own. Supplies for our eventual long rest coming, because, oh boy, we've been taking a small bit of punishment. Everything looks new. We're all in the party again. Please wish to live in more interesting times. Move together. At the ready. Oh, Starion, you're not sneaking. Yeah. Alright, if we have to lead with you, so be it. And we will find lots of interesting stuff down here. It's a lunar statue. It is stinking cake. Hardly a place of honor. Alright. I'm ready. Shadowheart. Since you are our religious type. There's magic at play. We'll hop over the back there. And if we can be perceptive. That might be worth a look. A short prayer. Salunite prayer. How useful. And a book. Nothing else back here, I think. Can we attack these? Did they say that in... No. I thought in the video, they, uh, in the panel from hell, they said you could attack precious stones and they would appear, but perhaps not these ones. Hop back over. I will take a potion of healing. Scroll of detect thought. Potion of psychic resistance. A glass chalice might be worth something. And then if we could please get somebody else to read this prayer. At the ready. An ancient prayer. Wonder if Saluna was listening. And there we go. 
Never knew prayer could be so practical. You should leave it, or even destroy it if possible. She's had better days for the state of her face, hasn't she? There could be something useful here. This rubbish is an offering to Saluna. At best, it's worthless. At worst, who knows, could be cursed. Do not trifle with that moon witch or her trinkets. Only trouble will follow. I think a persuasion check here. And let's give ourselves... Oh no, we, yeah, we, we just short rested. So we can give ourselves advantage on this. Although that said, it's only DC 10 and we're getting plus 5. So I don't think we need the advantage. Excellent. Fine. Perhaps you can sell them for a couple of coins. So what do we get? Handcrafted pendant. Writhing dance. Whenever the wearer has 50% or less hit points, they don't provoke opportunity attacks. And then trinkets and baubles. Who's going to be most likely to be at risk of opportunity attacks? I guess it's Shadowheart being the only one who's kind of got a shield and isn't going to want to be at the back of things. But otherwise, we've taken what's worth over here. So we can head back up this cliff. And out the way we came in. Step by step. Then next we have to decide whether we're going to go into bog rot or around its perimeter past scratch. So let's get out of this den to begin with. My pleasure. And then from here, we have options next time. We can go left, we can go right. Although I don't think we can cross this river just yet, if at all in this location at least. And we can see a good boy over there. So next time... We will see what that good boy is doing. See about possibly getting ourselves a long rest before we get into too many other scraps. And then see where we go from there. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.